Hi. Welcome to Perry Pure Podcast. Uh, our guest today is actress uh, Zainab Balagoon. She's been in many Nollywood films, including the Wedding Party series, Sylvia, God Calling, and more. So Zainab, how you go? How, how's it going? It's going really well. Um, I'm so excited to be talking to you today. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you were born and raised in London um, to Nigerian parents. Um, what was it like growing up in London in the 90s? Oh, um, I, you know, funny thing is I was having a conversation with a friend about um, the 90s and just how much fun uh, we had back then. Um, I grew up with my aunt and uncle in South London, uh, mm -hmm. in Clapham. And, you know, I just remember just being able to really express myself and be free. Uh, I, I remember, you know, playing out outside until, you know, until it was dark a bit and, you know, there not being any issues or, um, you know, any concerns about what was going to happen to us when we were outside in the street playing. Uh, things that now that, you know, I feel like we definitely took for granted because I look at you know, in, in current times, I, I can't imagine sending, you know, kids outside on the street by themselves and just leaving them, you know, unattended to and, and playing around. Uh, right. I, I really valued, um, you know, all that time and all those memories that we were able to just create. And, you know, London back then is, well, you know, even Clapham back then is a lot different to what it is right now. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of gentrification that's taken place. And, you know, when I go back home and I just see all the changes, I'm like, wow, this is where I grew up. And, and the space <laughs> is suddenly so, it's so posh and it's so fancy and, you know, everything is so expensive. I'm like, yeah, this wasn't, this wasn't what we experienced. This wasn't what we lived. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I living in London has definitely shaped me, um, uh, shaped who I am and shaped the artist that I've become. Oh, okay. But um, around around that time when you were growing up, you used to go to Nigeria too on vacation, right? Like summer vacations and whatnot? I did. I did. Um, I, I think the longest that I had stayed was about maybe two or three weeks. Um, when I was younger, we would go at least maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be either during Christmas or, you know, summertime, the moments we were uh, done with school to just visit family. Uh, and I think it was an opportunity for our parents to also remind us that, hey, you may be living somewhere else, but this is where you really come from. <laughs> and if you act a fool, you know, it doesn't take much for me to you know, bring you home. So <laughs> it was um, just really good to uh, get the best of both worlds. It was a good reminder. Um, I always loved coming home because I felt like I was treated like a star, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone that you hadn't seen in so long was ready to take you out and, you know, spend money on you. And um, it, it was that culture that we needed. Um, and yeah, I, I, I always loved coming home. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. It's uh, I feel like uh, that's something that could definitely keep you grounded, uh, grounded mm -hmm. like being like you know London and going to Nigeria and whatnot. Um, you you got a degree in law from uh, the University of Kent. Um, have you ever got to uh, gotten to practice law at all or? <laughs> I have not. I will tell you that my mother is probably still secretly praying that <laughs> one day I will. Um, and who knows, I might just. Uh, I, you know, studying law, I remember, I think I was about eight or nine or something. And, you know, I was at a bus stop with my mom and she asked me, what did I want to be when I you know, when I grew up and we were in central London in London Bridge area uh, with all these high rises and I pointed to one of them and I said, you know, I want to walk back. I, I want to work in one of those buildings. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was happening in that building. I just knew mm -hmm. that it was made of glass and it was fancy and, you know, it'd be nice to have a really pretty office. Um, but then once I got into college and I realized that, you know, I, I talk a fair bit um, and I argue a fair bit and figured, you know, why not try this thing called law? 
So I studied it in college and also did my, my degree in it. And within the first and second year, I was like, damn, I've made a mistake. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I remember seeing at least half of my course mates literally not come back in the second year because it was you had to be built for it um but as i got into my third year and i was able to sort of pick my options i realized that what i really enjoyed was more media law and you know contracts and intellectual property so still things that kept me in the media space um mm -hmm. and at that time i was still juggling my modeling career and you know dipping my toes into this whole acting space so it made sense um but like i said i don't know there might maybe in the distant future who knows i might this degree to use but i'm i'm using it pretty much every day anyway <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm 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 uh i'm assuming that you don't hire lawyers to negotiate your acting contract <laughs> <laughs> well yes we, we we do have some lawyers but um i i also get a chance to take a look at it and um send my notes off Oh, okay. Um, tell me about your modeling days in the UK and how did that lead um, to an acting career? So um, modeling, just like acting, I fell into. I never really wanted to be a model. I wanted to be a lot of things, an entrepreneur. I wanted to own a hair salon, which I finally got to do. Um, I, I wanted to be a chef, but modeling uh, was something that sort of fell into my lap. Uh, I remember clearly the day I was scouted. Uh, I was at my cousin's birthday um, picnic in the park and you know one of her friends brought another friend who was a, um, a booker for this really popular uh, modeling agency called Premier, um, Premier One. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked at me and he was like, oh, I, I feel like you have something. Come over to the office. We'll take some test shots and let's see. So I go, um, you know, I, I go all made up. I got my hair nicely braided. I did all <laughs> the things that I shouldn't have done. Um, <laughs> wore, you know, the most awful outfit. You know, I, I didn't keep it simple. And I went in and, you know, they were like, okay, well, let's, let's sign you. Yeah. And even when that happened, I still didn't realize what was happening um, at that point in time. I had no practice um, and, you know, they would sort of, I was thrown into the deep end. Mm -hmm. uh, what it meant to go to castings and have a portfolio and, you know, what the industry, um, you know, could do to you mentally and emotionally. So I, I, I ran with it. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to be a part of some really cool editorials and campaigns and uh, naturally in your model life, there'll be a point where you get sent off um, as uh, for adverts and, um, you know, featured roles or roles as an extra. Mm -hmm. And that happened in I, I ended up being uh, booked for a new BBC One drama where I was an extra. Mm -hmm. And, you know, film is one of those things where film and TV, it's, you know, you watch it for the 30 minutes or the one hour you're sitting there for, but it can take up to six months, you know, to get you Amazing, that. Right. Yeah. So I was on set for this series and I'd taken my dissertation, my, my textbooks, everything from uni and was just sitting there. I did my hair and makeup. And I remember everybody else just complaining about, you know, having to sit around and wait or, you know, when was it going to be our turn? And you know, we were bottom barrel being extras, you know, nobody really cared about, nobody really cared about <laughs> us. So, so I was... You know, I, I would busy myself with my my textbooks and, and my work and I it wasn't a big deal to me. I was more amazed by the fact that we were watching this thing called TV um, mm -hmm. come to life, uh, something that you never really got to see. And, right. you know, I, I got an opportunity to, you know, work alongside some stars that I had, you know, grown up of watching. watching and so I just I took it all in and I was really excited about it and so you know that sort of work kept coming I kept going for more auditions as as an extra and I believe there was one day where I was called for a speaking role mm -hmm. and I didn't really prepare I went in there they gave me the lines I read it and I did it and they were like oh yeah we really like you we'd like to um give you the job 
<laughs> I remember saying to myself, I was like, do these guys know that I don't know what the hell I'm doing? <laughs> they're giving me the job? Like, are they sure? Okay, <laughs> great. I mean, whenever they figure out that this is a scam, it's <laughs> all on them. And so uh, that's where I started, literally just continued to go for more, um, you know, speaking roles. And, and, and I literally just said to myself, the more people hire me, you know, if I keep going and they and, and, and they sign me on, then so be it. You know, I'll stop the moment somebody tells me that, you know, we don't think you're, you're good enough. You're good enough. <laughs> yeah. And that's literally how I got into acting and acting sort of, I, I loved it more and more. I wasn't, um, you know, I've never been uh, officially trained or, or, or anything. Um, I just sort of grew with it. I would watch videos. I would, um, you know, practice as much as I could in front of the mirror. I would use projects as, you know, practice opportunities. And I, I, I grew, you know, it, it became such a big part of my life, um, so much more than acting, so much more than anything else. I, I tell people all the time, if I could act for the rest of my life, I surely would. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, so is that how basically you were, you ended up on the set of uh, The Dark Knight Rises too? With, yes, uh... yes. That's exactly how I did. Um, and that was another big moment for me because that was the biggest production that I had ever been a part of. And, you know, I remember going for so many different fittings and then, you know, getting there that day. I, I believe our call time was at like, 4 a.m. or something like that and while you know my family members were like what kind of job are you going for that starts at 4 a.m. why would you do that <laughs> I was like yes you know it's just gonna be great I'm gonna get the night bus and I'm gonna get there on time and um, I met so many amazing people and I'll never forget um, you know there was this scene where we were dancing and dancing around uh, Anne Hathaway and, and and she had mentioned to me she was like oh I really like your dress I was like oh my god she said she likes my dress this is fate this is it um <laughs> and just watching you know the likes of Samuel L Jackson and Christian Bale and just like oh my god these are the guys that are doing it and um it changed it really just changed the course of my life at that point yeah I think um that would definitely help you in like gaining confidence and why not yeah um yeah um so the wedding party series are among the top 10 highest grossing nigerian films um tell me about how you got cast in in well in the first one um so i had i moved to nigeria in 2012 um and the plan was to i was actually offered a role in a series here and i had a online web series that I was producing and had gotten invited down to audition for this new TV station that was going to be Pan-African and was given the job as a presenter and producer. So I had two daily shows on that channel, but you know, that was taking place in a completely different mm -hmm. city um, away from Lagos where, you know, it's, that is predominantly the city of entertainment and, you know, all things showbiz. So mm -hmm. when the moment I got an opportunity to move back to Lagos, um, I was able to sort of just spread my wings and do more work. And being on TV as a presenter meant that when I, it was more of a strategic decision uh, taking that TV job because it meant that whenever I did get invited down to auditions, you know, people would recognize me and they'll say, okay, well, you know, we're familiar with her. She's not brand new. Um, and they would give me a chance. So um, Ebony Life, the channel that I was working for, decided to reposition themselves in the movie market and start producing their own films. And the wedding party was going to be the first offering from them. And oh. I, I think my boss was just like, hey, I think you should audition. You know, I know that you, you want to do this acting thing. And I remember auditioning for the role of the bride. Oh. Uh, that was actually the first thing that they called me in for. Um, but then they had uh, cast that and asked me to come back in to read for the um, the wedding the planner. planner. Yeah. And they loved it. I said, <laughs> okay, sure, let's do this. And I think Wonu was one of the 
you know, she's still one of my favorite characters. Um, I had so much fun playing her. I hadn't done anything, you know, comedic. Um, and so it was a, a, a good challenge for me. And it was, it was just a fun experience being a part of that project um, that went on to do so well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's funny because uh, I think your character was in a lot of ways a, a comic relief in both of the films. Um, so y you had previously started a web series, which you mentioned. Um, did, were you able to draw from, from that experience? Because obviously that, that kind of like needed, you needed some planning for, um, to put the web series together. Were you able to draw from that experience to play a wedding planner? Um, I would say having the series definitely give, you know, gave me so much more confidence uh, because the series was all about interviewing celeb African celebrities and, you know, connecting them with the diaspora. And that meant, you know, not being shy about anything and, you know, uh, going out there and asking the tough questions, regardless of what it is that, you know, came back to you. So, it made me, you know, very gritty and, and gave me that strength to be, you know, to throw caution to the wind. Um, mm -hmm. But with, with Wonu, I, I just remember just creating her into someone that I felt like, you know, people would want to watch and people would want to see. I, I, I also believe that she was your typical Nigerian, you know, very good at um, uh, pretending like everything is perfect and, you know, <laughs> uh, wanting the best things in life and wanting to be superior and, you know, all of that. But, you know, the Africanness, the, 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 the truth is still there, you know, in, in, in the core of things. And I, I, I reckon that's why a lot of people could relate with her because they probably had those moments where they've had to pretend to be something that they weren't in order to achieve a particular goal. And mm -hmm. so that's how she pretty much came about. Right. Um, so when you, you got married a few years ago, uh, was yes. there a moment during your wedding that reminded you of, uh, of the series? <laughs> or was it like a lot oh, of moments? Oh gosh, <laughs> wedding planning is not easy. I, I, yeah. I mean, when you have such a tough job and planning a Nigerian wedding where you have <laughs> like, there's like three parts, you know, mm -hmm. you do the intro, then you do the, um, uh, you do the traditional wedding. And then in some cases you do the white wedding as well. So mm -hmm. I remember my, my, I was very, very hands-on. Um, I'm a bit of a, a uh, bit of a control freak. So I was, I was all over the place, knew pretty much every vendor and everything like that. So yeah, I, I, I know I've got to give it up to the winning planets. It's not an easy job. <laughs> No, not at all. I got married like uh, five months ago. It's a lot of planning that goes oh, into it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so as someone who grew up in London, did it come as a surprise to you how precious yet complicated Nigerian weddings can get them? Um, it did because back then they weren't as elaborate as they are now. Um, I don't even think I knew as a child that you did an introduction and then you did all the other parts. Mm. Um, and I, I don't think I've only ever been like a bridesmaid, like once or twice or a flower girl. So I, <laughs> I wasn't familiar with it, but it's a, it's a huge industry and such a grand affair here. Yeah. It's, um, it's something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in your movie, Sylvia, uh, which came out in 2018. Um, would you consider your character a villain? Oh, would I consider her a villain? Um, I, if I'm being honest, partially, but I also believe that there is a human side to Sylvia. You know, she was a woman who was in love and, you know, found that her relationship was breaking down right in front of her and she discovered that she was going to be misplaced and she naturally went through all the motions you know a, a woman scorned and 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 you got to witness that but yeah I would say she was partially um she was partially a villain 
Okay. Uh, you mentioned during an interview that you don't go into any character without consulting God first. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, so I would say, you know, being an actress means um, playing out a lot of truths. Uh, there's always something that is reality for someone who is watching your projects. And so I think that, you know, we owe it to the audience to be as respectful and be as honest as possible. Uh, and I, I, I don't think projects just come and go as well, like, you know, because these are stories, these are real stories. Um, and they sometimes affect us and sometimes stay with us. And so uh, I always, you know, want to be in that position where I have, I'm spiritually aligned and feel good about what it is that I'm, that I'm doing, even if I'm playing pretend. Um, Zainab is still very much present in this thing that's happening. And, you know, I feel like I have to be responsible for my mental and my emotional as well, as I give to the world and as I give to my audience. So, it's, it's a very important aspect. Um, yes, there are times where I completely forget to consult <laughs> um, because yes, I'm human and you know we, we miss things, but um, yeah, the spiritual aspect is definitely very important to me. Yeah, and um, how much of that spirituality were you able to use then to play your character in um, God Calling? Um, in God Calling, I don't think we realized what we were doing when we were shooting the project. Um, <laughs> I think everybody signed on like, oh yeah, this is great. Story is fantastic. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. But we didn't quite realize what the impact was going to look like. And I will say that I believe wedding, I mean, I believe God Calling to be the most impactful project that I've had, um, that has changed lives, um, I till now still get messages about it with people crying or breaking down or, you know, feeling like it was speaking to them in so many different ways. And mm -hmm. to, to produce a movie on faith, you know, something that seems so touchy to people that seems so foreign because nobody, you know, everybody wants to walk around in eggshells and, you know, you believe mm -hmm. in this and I believe in that, but <laughs> we had people of different, backgrounds and different faiths connecting to this project um we had right. even on the production team we had atheists and buddhists and you know muslims and christians and it just was a beautiful experience um and i'm i'm really honored to have been a part of that project that now even more people were able to watch the moment we got onto netflix yeah, I saw it was like uh, trending in many countries in Africa. Yeah, like, we, we were trending ago. for a, a few good weeks, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations on that. Yeah, I think um, Nalu has improved uh, in a lot of ways in the past 10 years. Uh, as an actress, you've contributed, obviously, to that improvement. Do you ever sit down and reflect on Nollywood's, Nollywood's journey? Um... I don't, uh, simply because I'm very fast paced. Um, I just go from one thing to the next thing and then to, to, to kind of like take it all in. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember Nollywood, you know, that I watched when I was growing up. And mm -hmm. I remember just because I never really watched them much when I was in London. It would be when I would come home, right. um, holidays and stuff. And, you know, my dad or my brother would go and get the CDs and we would have to get like six different CDs because they came in six different parts. <laughs> and that was an experience. Um, yes, we used to, you know, sort of, um, uh, we would sort of take the piss and be like, yeah, you know, this movie is crap or whatever, but we'd still spend all that time watching it watching and talking them. about <laughs> it. Um, and to just watch it to where it is now, we have grown tremendously. I think the one thing that I truly appreciate is just how much our stories travel. Uh, the West has realized that African stories are... Um, are phenomenal and so yes they are coming here and they are tapping into what we have which is you know all good and well but in the same breath I want to make sure that we are protected as people 
I want to make sure that our infrastructure is there. And it's, there are moments where I worry because, um, you know, sometimes you have stakeholders who are there for personal interests and not particularly for the culture and not particularly for the industry. So I, I always want to make sure that whenever we are pushing that envelope, we're pushing it also in our own personal, um, uh, interests. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's funny uh, that you mentioned CD. <laughs> it's it seems like such a foreign thing. Like like it does. I, I, yeah, like the last time I think I used the CD was like a year ago during the pandemic. I had like a bunch right. of CDs and I was going through them. So that's the last time I actually touched one. Did they have Blockbuster in uh in London? Yes, we did. We yeah, did. yeah. For a good was... while, and that. <laughs> That's another like great memory that, that that I have. You know, I, I I remember we would go out there and would buy our popcorn and 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 get out our CDs. I'm sorry, <laughs> get out our videos and stuff. And and it was an experience. Yeah. Uh, you don't often get that experience now with um, with film and content with everything being you know video on demand. The cinema yeah. is the last place you're gonna get an experience. Yeah, and it, I, I feel like it was also great for uh, a good family experience as well because uh, yeah, yeah. Nowadays there are like so many screens. Like even if you're sitting down and you're watching a movie with the family, like everybody seems to be doing something else as well. You know, it's not just you know all of us watching a movie. It's it's there's the movies there, but like some of us are in. Instagram, some of us are in TikTok, some of us are, are watching a whole other thing, you know, so. Right. Yeah. Do you remember the first film you ever got or you ever bought? Oh, the first. or VHS? Uh, oh, I, I can remember some that we sort of took out of uh, Blockbuster, mm-hmm. Notting Hill. Um, there was another one called, there was Crooklyn, there was Friday um yeah all of those sort of like classics yeah 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 Friday was fun uh do you have um a favorite Hollywood actress oh okay so my two favorite Hollywood actresses would be uh Viola Davis and Meryl Mm -hmm. Streep oh (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the the goal there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it 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 is. Um, absolutely love them. Yeah, amazing, amazing actresses. Um, do you have a role that you've always wanted to play, and and what is it? Oh, I would definitely love doing. I would love to play like some sort of assassin, um, something very <laughs> physical and you know action packed. Like a villain. Uh, in an like action a villain, pack. Yeah, a proper villain. That would be cool. Wow. Maybe in a superhero of some sort. Maybe a superhero of some sort. That could work <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe a villain in uh in James Bond. Yes, or, yeah. or a Bond girl. Oh, that, Bond girl. That would work. That would work <laughs> well. Or a Bond girl. I think I think Daniel, like it's it's gonna be his last one. Um, the the next one coming up, I think. Um, yeah. So I have a lot of people on my Facebook page uh, that are from Ghana and Nigeria, and some of okay. them have reached out to me asking me, you know, for advice on how to become an actor or filmmaker. What advice would you give them? Okay. Um, I mean, I would advise people pretty much just based on what I know and what I experience. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think you have to be trained. Um, I think if you have something that you continue to work at and you continue to grow and learn through, um, then there's definitely a place for you. I think one of the biggest keys for me as an actress, and that might be as a result of having to come into the African space networking. Um, I didn't know anyone um it didn't matter that I had done all these great things in the UK nobody cared I had to start from the ground up and networking allowed me to meet the right people I would target directors and producers and casting directors 
you know, even line producers, people who you may feel like, you know, they might not be able to, you know, offer me any kind of help or get me somewhere, but getting your foot in the door with those people, letting them know that you're around will sort of help position you better when things do come on the table. Uh, I remember doing even a, a monologue series that I would release on YouTube where I was literally just practicing by producing monologues, recording myself and putting it up. Uh, not because I was hoping that one day somebody would stumble you know, on me, but more so it gave me an opportunity to uh, hone in on my craft during the downtime. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, always make sure that you have something that's paying while you're chasing your passion. Uh, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity of, you know, working pretty much full time and having my, my, my passion is a part time hobby, but I could, I could make certain decisions because I had, you know, a steady income that was coming in all the time. So I, I wouldn't advise anyone to sort of risk it all and be like, well, Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, throw everything out there and you know not work and 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 all sorts so those are those are the things that I feel like help me that I would encourage people to try okay um this is more of a personal uh, question what what do you think is a a secret is the secret to a successful marriage oh god um <laughs> from from I, I mean I would say from your own experience as well. From my own experience. Yeah. Um I honestly do not know if there is any major secret. You know, there are things that I, I've been married now for uh three years. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, you hear all the typical things communicating and you know, giving each other respect <laughs> and which are all great on paper but then you know your partner will come and you know annoy you and you still <laughs> have to deal with the realities of life um but the one thing that I learned was that you know as fluffy and as um fairy tale marriage is it's it's a job you know yeah. it's 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 work that you have to wake up every single day and tell yourself that I want to show up for my job today and I want to show up <laughs> in this capacity and that capacity um yeah. and I think people definitely should always be deliberate um about their uh, about their marriages and relationships be deliberate about your actions with your partner um and what you want uh and yeah ultimately hopefully by you know the special grace you you happen to to get yourself on a good path but it is um it is work that it's it work. definitely worth it um when you put in the effort right um i feel like any successful thing like whether marriage career you know you're gonna have to put a, to put in a lot of work so so that just uh, the way life is um, yeah. in that sense, yeah. Uh, so where can we see you next? Well, um, I know gosh, you are on set right now. Where can I am on set right now. <laughs> can you talk a little um, bit about it or is it too soon? Um, it's well, I mean, it's coming to uh, Netflix. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're, we're literally shooting the uh, sequel to Chief Daddy. Uh, uh, which okay. is going to be a comedy that's on Netflix. Uh, we have a few other projects that we're going to be shooting in the next two months that are, will be coming out this year as well. Um, okay. All projects that I'm really excited about. But yeah, wow. we have a few things cooking. <laughs> exactly. Looking forward to them. Uh, what <laughs> legacy um, do you want to leave when, when this is all said and done? Oh God, um, I, gosh, I've never really thought about that. Um, that is one question. I don't think anyone's ever really asked me that question. I just want to leave as much truth behind and encouraging people to also live in the space of truth. Um, I, want to leave behind a memory that says, you know, I've passed on something to someone. 
uh, be it if it's joy or the ability to do something or challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I want my value to be tangible. Um, mm -hmm. That's 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 what I would like. Okay, wow, amazing. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time and thanks for joining me uh, today. Thank um, you. Yeah, best of luck with uh, the project you're currently shooting right now. Um, break a leg <laughs> in the theater <laughs> term. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to your future projects and uh, take care. Be safe, though. I shall. You too. Thank you for the support. All right. Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.